Generally speaking, I was thinking about only putting out a few videos and then going a week and then putting out more on the weekend when I had extra time, but it seems that God has given me extra time during the weekdays, even with my college courses still going. I'm on finals week, so I have quite a few papers, but I did want to take the time out to make another video, and um, I'm being plagued by uh, hearing loss in my right ear due to extreme sinus pressures and problems with that. My area is suffering me greatly with allergens. So keep me in your prayers. But today I wanted to explain what sin is. Because a lot of people hear it, and a lot of people might have seen my previous videos on Jesus and Satan, but a lot of people might not know what the sin is. What is sin? Is it something from a Final Fantasy game? <laughs> That's a lame joke, but for real, what is sin? So sin came into the picture when Adam and Eve listened to Satan, the serpent, and ate of the tree of knowledge. Now I want you to pay close attention to what that tree tree was called. It wasn't called an apple tree. It wasn't called the tree of enlightenment. But the serpent didn't lie. He did promise that they would become godlike, and they, they definitely did. Unfortunately, they were already godlike. They just didn't realize it. See, when you eat of the tree of knowledge, you gain the understanding of good and evil. Now, that bears the problem that now you know what evil is, and therefore you can't be in a perfect society because you will corrupt it with that evil. So for example, just take for example, going up into heaven, seeing streets of gold, giant diamonds, and saying to yourself, wow, man, there's so much here. I'm going to go ahead and break off one of those diamonds and put it in my pocket. And you very well may not be actually going to do that, but you might think that. And that is the knowledge of good and evil because you know that it is evil to steal. But when you're in heaven and you don't have that knowledge, you have no desire to steal because you don't know about it. There's no reason to do it because God provides you with everything. I mean, you know, what's the point in stealing when you can go and ask any angel, hey, could you make me a massive diamond? And they would just pull out a massive diamond for you, you know? It, it's like that. I don't know if it's like that to a T, but basically you have everything you would ever want in heaven. So that's why sin can never enter in. That is why Jesus Christ came, because he has to be the person who goes in between us and God. Because if you pray to God, you're never going to get through. I know that sounds harsh, but your prayers aren't going to get through, because unless you have accepted to Christ, God can't look upon you because you have sin. You have sin in your soul. You have sin on your blood. You have the blood of your forefathers on you. And I know that sounds unfair also, but, but the alternative is serving Satan. So you can feel free to serve him if you find this to be unfair. God made a way through Jesus Christ. And the only time he will look upon sin is at judgment. And when final judgment comes, guess what happens? You're going to either be sent to hell or you're going to be told that you could have done better, but you've made it into hell. Or maybe you were a perfect servant and you're making it in anyways. And you'll have a big mansion and lots of treasures laid up for you. Sin is the desire to do evil. Sin is the action of doing evil. Sin is everything with evil. Evil is death. Death is sin. The wages of sin are death. It is stated in the Bible. The wages of sin is death. So if you want to die, go ahead and sin. And while we all do die in our human form right now, this is our ultimate test, the point of the wages of sin is death is that when you go to hell you die a second death and when final judgment comes that's when that second death comes so you're trapped in hell being tormented because you're a sinner and then god calls everyone up from hell and judges them individually upon their hearts to see if they truly do uh, want to be forgiven and accept jesus christ into their heart as i said before there are documentaries of people going into hell and seeing individuals suffer talking to individuals with jesus and them not being sincere about accepting Jesus Christ into their heart and blaming Jesus for their predicament, blaming him for being in hell. They curse him to his face because they are stuck in hell. And this stuff happens. And it's very unfortunate. And you might find that radically insane. Imagine the most painful experience you could imagine times a million. And that is hell. And you have people who watch Jesus Christ walk next to them and he could free them from hell. And no, they don't accept him because so consumed by hatred, so consumed by unforgiveness, that they blame him for their predicament. And that's ridiculous. So quite a few people were questioning, asking what sin is. Um, sin is lust. Sin is adultery. Sin is murder. Sin is all kinds of terrible acts. But sin is big and small. So you think about it. If somebody asks you, like, hey, you know, uh, how old are you? And you tell them, oh, uh, I'm 21 when you're actually 30. You just lied. And that's a sin. And you're, you're not necessarily going to burn in hell for that sin. But that is a sin that will not let you get into heaven necessarily. 
Exactly. I don't know the technical details of it. I don't know how severe some sins are versus others, but I do know right now that the Bible does state God will not look upon sin, and it separates us from God. So when all sin is abolished, when hell is destroyed, when heaven is destroyed, and there is the new earth, and God is with his people again, that means there is no need for sin anymore. There is no need for tests. There's nothing. Now, the point of sin, why was it created? Well, was it ever created? That's the real question. And no, there is no mention in the Bible when sin was created. What I think happened is that there are two eternal concepts. There is always an opposite and equal reaction to something. And so if God is good and God is ultimately perfect, then you have to imagine that Satan would have been his opposite. And obviously Satan was not as powerful as God because he lost, but he is the opposite and therefore is the one who reigns in hell. And that is where sin came from. Because if God creates all life, there must be something out there that can destroy all life, and that would be death. And God probably created hell to contain all death and separate it from heaven with a great chasm, as it states once again in the Bible. So sin may have been a constant. Sin may have come about upon the fall of Satan. Sin may have been there later or sooner. Now, as for all of these answers, quite a few people who have had near-death experiences or talk about dying or talk about going to heaven get all their answers, but for whatever reason, they get clouded when they get back to earth. And that is more than likely because we don't have the brain capacity to understand it. We don't have the sensors to understand heaven. We we can't see it. We can't uh, understand. We can't feel it. We can't smell the smells because we're not there as our physical beings trapped in these beastly human bodies. It was three hours before Adam and Eve fell to sin. And it was that quick. I mean, my God, right? What is love if it is forced? What is, what is the love of a robot? You know, it's worthless. And thus, that is why there was a tree in the Garden of Eden and God wanted to test man. And you might say that is sadistic, that is ridiculous, but what is a robot's love? If God told them to not eat of that tree and they listened to him and never ate of the tree, do you really think we would even exist today? We very well may not and we might not suffer in the way that Adam and Eve did, but God made a covenant with them and we are promised heaven because of that covenant. So it really is up to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's your choice whether or not you want to choose to serve God, or if you'd rather choose to serve Satan. And that is ultimately the choice in the universe as well. Even if there was no God or no Satan, there is good and evil, and it is always your choice to serve good or evil. So, you know, if you don't believe in the Bible and you don't believe in religion, well then, can you get behind the fact that there is definitely good and evil in the world and you can choose to serve one or the other? It's a very simple concept, and I think most people understand that concept. So that's sin, ladies and gentlemen. There's not much else to say about it. Sin is a terrible thing. It makes us dirty. It makes us unclean. It makes us horrible, immoral people. And uh, without any reason to try to strive to be better, why would we? I mean, a lot of people sit there and say because they have their own morals, but how far is that going to take you ultimately? The world was definitely a different place, and there were many people who were so engrossed in sin that God had to destroy the entire world at one point in time by flooding it. They were so immoral. They were so corrupt. They spat in God's face. They did not care. And the only people who were redeemable on that planet was Noah and his family. Is that not insane? Is that not insane to think about? But you really think about it and you have, you know, places like Babylon uh, that happened about 2300 years before Christ and from there stemmed the worship of a sun god and the worship of a mother and a child. And they co-opted many religions. Uh, Catholicism can be seen with the influences of the sun god and the mother and the child relationship and many of the practices that that Babylonian religion had, like the keeping of bones, like the keeping of saints' bones, that stuff actually does happen within the Catholicism religion. And it is depressing to see that these false religions have sprung out of this. I'm not necessarily saying Catholicism is false. I'm just saying that in its roots throughout its history, the Crusades, the Inquisition, the torturing of Christians, uh, the banning of reading of the Bible, they're, they're notorious for historically being terrible towards Christianity and uh, very insufferable towards Christianity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Not only uh, do false religions come out of sin, but it does come and it comes to take you. Satan hates us. Don't ever forget, Lucifer hates our guts. He hates us as much as he hates Christians. He hates us as much as he hates Satan worshippers. He hates humans, period. He has no desire to share his kingdom with us. So whether or not you choose to serve him, he will not serve you in the afterlife. Don't be deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal savior. Try it. Try it as hard as you can. Try it. Try it. Test him. Ask the 
most difficult questions. Beg his mercy. Beg him to heal you of something. Do you have a hate-filled heart? Are you hurt? Are you physically handicapped in some way, shape, or form? Ask for a miracle. Try him. Accept him fully into your heart and try it. But you won't receive those miracles unless you're willing to do what Jesus commands. It's not like a doctor. It's not like a machine you can pop a quarter in and get something from unless you're willing to put in the effort to do so. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Freedom. Thanks for watching. Stay free and always keep me in your prayers.